Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Patients with unknown primary cancers or unclear diagnoses are not rare, representing about 70 to 90,000 patients a year in the United States alone. The approach to these patients has, is evolving. In general, these patients present with metastatic cancer and the primary site or the origin of the cancer is not clear, even after rather extensive evaluation. In that case, one needs to determine the type of cancer the patient has. The evolution of, of diagnostic testing in the last 10 years has been quite remarkable. First, pathology. The pathologists are very helpful and we use immunohistochemical testing or staining. These have evolved and now we can determine the cancer type in approximately 30 to 40 percent of all patients. When one has a cancer type, it's logical to go ahead and treat the patient for that cancer type. We also now have molecular testing, molecular diagnostic testing, which improves the diagnosis of this group of patients rather remarkably. In fact, when using molecular testing and immunohistochemical staining in this group of patients, we now can determine the actual type of cancer in about 90 to 95 percent of the patients. Prior to this time, we were somewhat confused. It was difficult to know how to treat these patients. Therefore, we used sort of general shotgun type approaches where we used empiric chemotherapy. Uh, although some of the patients did okay, this was not ideal. We weren't treating most of the patients for what they actually have. Now, this has been reversed. Reviews on this have been published by my associate, Dr. John Hainsworth, and myself in DaVita's uh, recent edition, Principles and Practice of Oncology. In addition, we wrote a large, uh, rather comprehensive review looking at molecular testing for determining the type of cancer these patients have that was published in the European Journal of Pathology or Verkhoff's uh, archive uh, just uh, last year, and I would recommend those as general sources for more information regarding this group of patients. When we have a patient diagnosed with cancer, uh, the workup now includes many steps before treatment decisions are made. In the past, you got a diagnosis, cancer, then you proceeded with appropriate treatment approaches. Now you have to know what sort of cancer it is, what is the organ where the cancer started, and then what molecular abnormalities are seen in that cancer so you can make an individualized treatment decision. If you take the example of lung cancer, there is non-small cell lung cancer, there is small cell lung cancer. In the past, if you knew if it's non-small cell lung cancer, then you proceeded with a certain chemotherapy, and if it's small cell lung cancer, you proceeded with a certain different kind of chemotherapy. But now we know that not all lung cancers are the same. So if you had a patient with non-small cell lung cancer, we want to know if it's adenocarcinoma, squamous cell, or large cell. And to make those kind of diagnosis, you first need adequate tumor tissue. So the first thing we need to uh, make sure when we get a tissue biopsy for a patient with suspected cancer is to get appropriate and adequate amount of tissue. We obviously want to do it in a manner that's safe for the patients. Don't put them at high risk by trying to get more tissue, but obtaining core biopsies whenever possible is important. Once you have a tissue, the pathologist looks at it and makes a diagnosis often based on morphology. Morphology may provide good clues as to what the cell of origin is and where the cancer came from and so forth. But sometimes that's not enough and then they resort to immunohistochemistry. Now these days pathologists always would do immunohistochemistry in addition to their standard stains and immunohistochemistry provides very helpful clues. In the case of non-small cell lung cancer, uh, we look for thyroid transcription factor 1, TTF1. If that's positive, then we know that this is likely to be an adenocarcinoma. Uh, TTF1 is positive in about 75-80% of lung adenocarcinomas. In squamous cell histology, P63 or P40 are the immunostains used, and they are positive in nearly 90% of patients with squamous cell cancer. 
So by using P63, P40, and TTF1, you may be able to say what the specific histological subtype of lung cancer this particular patient has. But sometimes, despite all of these, you don't have a diagnosis because maybe there is not enough tissue and you don't have the ability to go back and get another biopsy, or uh, the tumor may be poorly differentiated that uh, the markers and the patterns are nonspecific. And that's where now we have some additional help in the form of the CTID testing, which is a gene expression panel, where with limited amount of tissue, you could do a gene expression profile based on RT-PCR and try to see what the uh, organ where the cancer originated from. So instead of making a diagnosis of cancer of unknown primary, you're trying to select those patients for more testing with the gene expression profiling and help identify what organ the cancer came from. Now the importance of this specific step or trying to find out which organ the cancer started from cannot be understated. A few years ago, if you had cancer of unknown primary, you gave a standard chemotherapy regimen, whether it's adeno or squamous. But now that's no longer the case. It is important to know if this patient has lung cancer as the origin because you're going to do a specific set of molecular testing there. If a patient has colon cancer, then you're going to do a different set of tests and also use different set of chemotherapy treatment options uh, from lung cancer. So knowing what the origin of the cancer is to the best extent possible helps us provide the most likely regimen that's going to work for the patient.